Joining me now from Washington, D.C., president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. Tom, this investigation has been going on for over a year. Do you think we're going to learn anything before the election? Will this wrap up anytime soon? We know that President Trump is hoping for that. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, we probably won't get much, if anything, in terms of additional prosecutions. Maybe Peter Strzok will be prosecuted. Uh, he was asked a question on CBS News the other day whether he was a target, and he didn't answer the question. So maybe he's a target. I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's now been, it was April of 2019, I think Durham was appointed, and there's only been one prosecution, one plea deal, a plea deal that was essentially handed to him on a silver platter last year, uh, and still nothing's been done in terms of other prosecutions. So it doesn't bode well for uh, full justice, given the length of time uh, to, uh, uh, since he's been appointed, but who knows? I, uh, you know, I just presume past behavior is an indication of future performance. And the past behavior of the DOJ is to give the Obamagate uh, crooks a pass. Yeah, it seems like there is a two-tier justice system going on here, and it's really clearly unfair. No one else would be able to get away with some of the things that they have gotten away with. Uh, of course, that is if they're Republicans, conservatives, or in the Trump orbit. Now, you mentioned uh, Peter Strzok, the former FBI counterintelligence agent, and he has been making his media rounds, and we have a video clip of that. Roll tape. What is Durham looking for? Well, he is looking for, I can only assume, something that the attorney general has asked to use as political influence to chill both the past investigations and present those in a partisan negative light, as well as to cast a chill over anybody who might be thinking about doing something now or in the future. But there's no public interest that could be served by releasing something in the next 55, 54 days that wouldn't be served by releasing it on November 15th. And so when you look at what happened today, I think it's another sign that there's something uh, very troubling about this investigation. I think it's very clear the attorney general is, is pushing for a result uh, that, that is completely inappropriate. This guy says, oh, we could just wait until November 15th. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Of course he would say that. And then uh, Peter Strzok over there, he's, he's, he's just kind of clueless, wondering what they're even investigating. Uh, he's totally innocent. Keep in mind, this is the guy who lied under oath, and we're supposed to believe him now. And also, uh, what business does he have going on national television? His credibility has uh, been totally destroyed. Well, this is an FBI agent who uh, had several text messages talking about stopping President Trump from being president and how he was going to do it. He talked about the insurance policy. Uh, he's the one who, used, uh, using uh, innuendo and gossip on his own, generated the crossfire hurricane uh, opening memo that launched the targeting of President Trump, at least formally. Uh, so it's really ironic that he's involved here. Look, to the degree there's any scandal at the Justice Department, I suspect we're going to find the scandal is deep staters objecting and obstructing any serious investigation or prosecutorial decision making by the Justice Department or Durham. I tell you what, if there are prosecutions that come after the election, that's inappropriate because you can bet they, they knew uh, or had enough to prosecute people before the election. And the only reason it's being held up, if it's being held up at all, it's because the deep state thinks, in my view, that it might be seen as helping Trump as opposed to uh, hurting him. So tell me a little bit about the DOJ records that Judicial Watch obtained showing the Mueller team accidentally wiping the phones. It's funny that it always happens on that side and they get away with it. And as uh, Don Jr. said recently in an interview, he said if he removed a comma from an email or something, he'd probably be serving time. That's exactly right. Uh, Paul Manafort had his home raided because he was seen to have been destroying evidence here we have 27-plus uh, phones uh, wiped accidentally or see, uh, but, but because they, weren't use, they were inserting their passwords too often. One phone wiped itself. I mean, that's just magic. And who do you trust? The Justice Department's doing this, Mueller special counsel team, the investigators are destroying evidence. And on top of that, the IG gets this information about this pandemic of wiped phones they don't do anything about it or disclose it, and it's up to the little old judicial watch to uncover it through a litigation that took over a year to get this information about. Uh, really, uh, so what do we do now? We're going to have the IG investigate itself? Special President Trump has been ill-served by the Justice Department. They're protecting themselves, and he should have a separate 
criminal inquiry into what the Justice Department and FBI did against him and other innocent Americans. But is there no backup for this information? I thought if a phone's broken or whatever, like, isn't there a way, some sort of forensics way to get in there and get that information? Oh, certainly, potentially. We found during the Clinton emails that wipe pho wiped, wiping your computer, wiping emails, deleting them doesn't necessarily mean they're entirely deleted. But the passage of time makes it harder to recover this material, which in my view is uh, show, uh, kind of uh, highlights the outrage at the delay of the public disclosure of this scandal. How many f times has your phone been wiped? from typing in a password too many times. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know how to do it. I, I guarantee you there's not one viewer of yours that's wiped a phone or yep. knows how to do it. Uh, I'm sure it's technically possible, but my guess is you gotta work hard at it. But also, it's not just like one person. We're talking about like 20 devices here. That's right. If the FBI went into a corporation and the corporate leadership had 27 white phones, wiped phones amongst them, as the FBI was conducting an investigation, what do you think would happen? Yeah. They, as, as Don Trump Jr. <laughs> pointed out, they'd be People would be prosecuted, they'd be charges. sent to the slammer. <laughs> That's for sure. When are we going to, are we going to raid the DOJ for this information? Are the DOJ going to raid itself? This no. is the absurdity of this whole mess. Of, of course not. That's just not how it works. It's like they took this out of, out of Hillary Clinton's playbook, except they didn't use the bleach bit. One phone was smashed. And these same people were prosecuting people for less, uh, Stephanie. This is what's really outrageous, is that they're deleting evidence, they're destroying government property, and they're deleting people for, uh, uh, excuse me, the, uh, prosecuting people, trying to delete them, practically speaking, from uh, our nation's public life, but trying to prosecute them and catch them in crimes for far less. And really quickly, I wanted to get your reaction to Danahy's resignation. Um, obviously, we don't know why, because uh, Durham, they didn't release that information. They just confirmed that she did leave. But uh, some on the left are using this opportunity to say that it's because she was being pressured before the election and this and that. Uh, do you think there's any truth to that? I have no idea. If she's an anti-Trumper, it may explain why it is there was a delay. And or little in action if she had a primary role there in the Durham investigation, maybe that helps explain it. Uh, but uh, or it may be that something big's about to happen, and uh, giving her political leadings reportedly, she doesn't want to be there and objects to it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it means. Uh, all I do know is the proof is in the pudding. Not much has been done by Durham. Yeah, that's true. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and so far. Not really much. Well, we're going to have to leave it here, Tom. Thank you.